Said together, you have been so good. You have been so good to me. In my painless power, you've been my strength. You are my power from the end. So good, so good. One more time, you've been so good. 
Come on, raise your hands once again to him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless war. Hey, Shodara, nothing in this world can satisfy. 
Cause Jesus, your thing come that won't run around. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, much less love and beauty, endless world. There is nothing, Lord, nothing in this world. Cause Jesus, cause Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord? In all the earth, much less love and beauty, much less love and beauty, endless world. There is nothing. together this world you're the treasure treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are faithful in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrongs redeemer of my past and present wrongs holder of my future days to come Holder of my future is to come. One more time, you're the treasure, treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, in my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer, redeemer. Your presence, your presence, 
Yes, Lord, you are wonderful. You are lovely, oh God. There is nothing else that can satisfy like your presence does, oh God, in our lives. And minutes of the predicaments, oh Lord, you always satisfied us with goodies from heaven. Lord, you are wonderful. Your presence is heaven to us. Your presence is heaven to us. Yes, Lord. Yes, King of Glory. Yes, Jehovah Lord. Yes, Father. You are worthy, Lord. You are lovely, King of Glory. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands and let us make a joyful hand clap to the King. Let us make a joyful hand. Yes, a clapping to the Lord. Our God is good. Our God is lovely. Our God is so caring. He's been so good. He's been so gracious and so compassionate. Come on, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In one mikono tena chapia bona yesu makofi ya sangwe na vigele gele. Wapima kofi ya jusana. God is good. He has done me well. Oh my soul, arise and praise the Lord. God is good. He has done me well. Oh my soul, arise and praise the Lord. My God is good. He has done me well. Oh my soul, arise and praise the Lord. I say, He has done me well. And praise the Lord, I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. my soul, I rise and praise the Lord. Yeah, God is good, He has done me well. Oh, my soul, I rise and dance to the Lord. Yeah. I'm 
Shall we lift up our hands and give him praise? He's worthy of our praise and glory this precious morning. And yes, from your homes, uh, in the in-person worship service, he is worthy of our praise and worthy of our glory. Let's lift up our hands and um, in a minute, in that breath of worship and praise, why don't you lift up the nation of Kenya and the church of Jesus Christ before the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I give you a minute or two or three, lift up your voice and remember the nation of Kenya and remember the church of Jesus Christ in prayer that the Lord is going to intervene, that the Lord is going to uh, raise up an altar that is going to be stronger than any foe in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you honor. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands, our God and our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are so grateful for your goodness and for your faithfulness this morning. As we conclude that session of worship and praise, we lift up the nation of Kenya before you, O God. We prophesy salvation upon the nation of Kenya. We prophesy healing. We prophesy deliverance upon the nation of Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your goodness, Lord, and your faithfulness prevail upon the nation of Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we pray, God, that you will empower the church of Jesus Christ in this season, Lord, that the faith of many is not going to grow cold. Lord, that there be empowerment by the power of your Holy Spirit upon the church of Jesus Christ. We thank you even for the remaining part of the service as we venture into the world this morning. May your grace and your power prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of us this precious morning, can we conclude by saying a powerful amen. To the Lord. With a hand of praise to the Lord. That is good. That is awesome. Let's appreciate um, the members of the Firebirds, the worship team, as they take back their seats in the Lord. What a joy to see all of us this morning. Our God is good and our God is faithful. Good to see some of us that we have not met for a while since the COVID break started. And it is such an honor in the presence of God this morning that the Lord gave you a privilege and an opportunity to worship together with us. What an awesome moment. And because um, I know that it has been the Lord who has been good, why don't you stretch your hand like this um, and let's greet each other in the air like this. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. And members of Destiny Worship Center, the Tattoo Chapel, and the visitors who are visiting us this morning, you are all welcome into this service. And would we lift up our hands again, even from our homes. Let me welcome the online viewers this morning from your home. May the Lord empower you. Let's give the Lord a good hand of praise in Jesus' name. He is worthy of our praise and worthy of our glory in Jesus' name. Would you lift up your hand and say, the Lord has been good to me. Has he been good to you? I testify also he has been good to me. Let's take our seats in the presence of God and the Lord bless you. We are going to do acknowledgments later after we bring the word. And um, it's such a great joy this precious morning. Wonderful, wonderful. What a joy, what a moment, what an opportunity in the presence of the Lord to be able to bring the word of the Lord this morning. So I take this privilege and opportunity to welcome our online viewers, to join those that are gathered this morning in the in-person worship service. The series of Lives Transitions continue that is what we have been sharing on, life's transitions. And um, we have covered the definition on what is uh, a transition. It is that period of time where things change from one state to another. 
and we have discovered there are several types of transitions. There is a forced transition, like the one we are seeing in COVID-19 recess, whereby people have been forced to adopt a new lifestyle of doing things. And then we have seen there is divine transitions. And I was also able to share on part on Sunday that God can move the waters, God can change the atmosphere, and you immediately enter into a divine transition where things change from one state to another by divine orchestration like we saw in the life of Joseph on Sunday. Now today, we are going to be sharing about uh, self-induced transitions. Okay, I repeat again, self-induced transitions and God will bless us this morning as we cover this very interesting topic that has constituted to a lot of counseling, a lot of deliverance sessions when people think it is a demon and could be it's not a demon or a force of darkness, it is a self-induced transition that has already taken place in their lives. I repeat again, a transition is a period of time where things change from one state to another. And they can change from one state to another by, by the Lord doing it, by circumstances forcing it, and today by self inducing kind of activities. Now let's go to Psalm 137 and then we are going to be able to capture what the Lord has for us in the word, in the reading of it as we move on. Psalm 137 beginning verse number one and um, it is going to form the basis of sharing on the self-induced transitions. Now, the Bible says in Psalm 137, verse 1, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Verse 2, the Bible says, We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. Verse 3, the Bible goes further to say, For there, those who carried us away captive asked us for a song, and those who plundered us requested the man saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And then the next verse says, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Verse 5, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skills. If I don't remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I don't exalt Jerusalem, above my chief joy. Now, the text of scriptures that we are reading this morning, it is a very interesting text of scripture because it is capturing years of prophecy, years of the children of Israel being given the word of the Lord that if they don't obey, they are going to end up in captivity in Babylon. Now, and unfortunately, the nation of Israel, they never hearkened to the word of the Lord. They never obeyed the word of the Lord. And as a result, they were carried captive in Babylon. And here in this text of scripture, it is a record of what is happening in their self-induced transition by the rivers of Babylon. There they sat down. They wept when they remembered Zion, the place of peace, the place of joy, the place of protection, the place of preservation. And because the nation of Israel, they never obeyed the word that if they don't take heed, they will go to captivity, then it happened, and they are by the rivers of Babylon, they are weeping, they are crying, they are remembering Zion. The enemy is mocking them and telling them, yes, you are our captives now. Can you sing for us one of these songs 
that he used to sing in Zion. And um, they could ask a question, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? May the Lord help somebody that is in person worship this morning or somebody online. May you never get into a self-induced transition. Can I hear somebody say amen? May you never sit by your rivers of Babylon. May you never weep there. May you never regret remembering Zion and the good things of Zion. And actually, this state of scriptures that we are reading this morning, it is a clear example of a nation that is in a self-induced transition and unfortunately, they have got to spend 70 years in Babylon in their captivity. This morning, as we are all listening to the word of the Lord, yes, could be your transition. Things are changing in your life, not because the devil is involved, not because God is involved, not because it is a false transition. The one we are reading in Psalm 137, it was a transition that ended into a 70 years of bondage in Babylon. And although the Lord had sent them prophets like Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and all of them, they never hearkened and they entered into a self-induced transition. I want to declare again as I am, wait for a prophetic amen from your end. May you never end into a self-induced transition. May you never end by your rivers of Babylon. May you never end into that place where you cannot even feel the joy of service. Verse 2 says, they hung their harps upon the willows. They could not play their harps any longer because they're in pain and suffering and anxiety. Because now, as we talk, they are not in Zion. They are actually in Babylon as a result of the captivity. And because I know you right, and I know those at home have their notebooks, I want to say a few things about self-induced transitions, but not very few. In case you are writing, you are just going to discover, you are going to end up with very very nice prophetic notes about this. I want to say this, that self-induced transitions are transitions that are triggered by the things that we do or not do. Self-induced transitions are transitions that are triggered by the things that we do or the things that we do not do. And it is very important to see Psalm 137 where the nation of Israel is in a state of pain, is in a state of regret. And I pray this morning, may you never, never be in a place of regret in Jesus' name. So serving these transitions are the transitions that are triggered by the things that we do or the things that we do not do. And let me tell you, because of the things that we do or because of the things that we do not do, so many people end up into a state where things are moving from one state to another because of either what they did and what they never did. Allow me to say this, number two, that some transitions that come from our actions have a personal and a corporate impact some of these transitions that result from our actions they have a personal and a corporate impact in other words when you get into a self-induced transition when things happen around you when things happen through you and your family has got to suffer, your business has got to suffer, and this and this is happening in your life, now it is important to know that some transitions coming from our actions, the things that we do have a personal 
and a corporate impact. And this is a reality. Some of the things that came up because of what you did or what you never did, you may have to live with them for a period of time in as much as God is a God of miracles, in as much as he is a God of signs and wonders. It is a reality from the Bible that some of the things we do, they have a corporate impact. Psalm 137, they are already in the impact of 70 years in Babylon. And let me tell you, saints, this morning, I bring this message with a lot of passion and with a lot of zeal in my heart because I know self-induced transitions, they are the basis of 70, 80, or 90% of all counselings where people kill and they're asking, what happened in my life? How comes I'm in Babylon? How comes I am by the rivers of Babylon and I am weeping and crying? And you are not telling the counsellor that Ezekiel came, prophesied, that if you don't watch, you may end up in Babylon and you never heed it. That the prophet of God, Jeremiah, came and gave a prophetic word and then it was never heeded unto. So, self-induced transitions, they come from the actions that we do and they have got a personal or a corporate impact. In other words, your choice as a husband may break apart a family that was joined on the altar. Your choices as a wife may break apart a family that walked down the aisle and the auditorium was full and the wedding was glorious, but because of those dangerous choices, then Israel ends up in Babylon and carries with them even the children that never sinned in the process. Allow me to say this thirdly about self-induced transition that despite warnings, comma, prophecies, counsel, and conferences, despite the warnings, prophecies, counsel, and conferences, a good portion of God's people still end up in self-induced transitions. That is a very important point. Even if you're not a good writer, you need to grab the words one by one. And I'll repeat it several times, even as I'm explaining, for you to fill up your sentence, that despite the warnings, the prophecies, the counsel, and conferences, a good portion of God's people still end up in self-induced transitions. In other words, it doesn't matter at times how many prophecies we receive, how many warnings we receive, how much counsel we receive, and how much conferencing we do, a good portion of God's people still end up in captivity in self-induced transitions. And this morning, my prayer and it is a passionate prayer. And I believe you are not receiving this word from the head level. You are receiving it from the spirit level. I would want to declare this morning that the Lord that you serve is going to speak to you in a way you can understand so that you don't end up by the rivers of Babylon. Can somebody say amen? And those of us watching from home, may the Lord deliver you in case you are in that pain, that suffering, that anxiety. May the Lord deliver you in case you are in your Babylon as a result of actions that happened in your life. Those are three key important points in this very introduction that serve in these transitions are transitions triggered by the things we do or not do. Number two, that some transitions or some transitions coming from our actions have a personal or corporate impact. And number three, that despite warnings, despite prophecies and counsel and conferences, a good portion of God's people still end up in a self-induced transition. So the big question this morning is, why would there be 
that even after great prophecies, even after great warnings, even after great instructions, even after great conferences, a great portion of God's people still end up in self-induced transitions. You look at a brother, and then you realize that if he did this, he will not be in that. If he obeyed this, he will not be in that. If he yielded to these, he will not be in that. I decree in Jesus' mighty name, the Lord will speak to you, whether through a dream, a vision, a prophet, or whatever nature of the way he will speak to you. And when he speaks to you, may you obey, because there are fruits after we obey. Can somebody say amen? If you're blessed so far as we prepare to go to the last two heavy uh, points, uh, can you give the Lord a good hand of praise in Jesus' mighty name? I want to say, number four, that um, self-induced transitions come from seven experiences. Self-induced transitions they come from one of these seven experiences in your life and in my life. And I want us to go through them and um, I pray that for each one of them, may God deliver you. Number one, self-induced transitions, they result or they come from costly diversions. You see, there are diversions in life, but some diversions are costly. Some diversions, they can rob you of your family. They can rob you of your job. They can rob you of your career. They can rob you of your next level. They are called costly diversions. And this morning, by the power of the Spirit of God, I pray, may the Lord help somebody that is driving so fast in the wrong direction. May you be able to turn back because some diversions are very costly. I pray this morning in Jesus' name. Although that occurrence, or that, although that deal, although that experience, although that thing that you're going through, it looks so sweet, and it looks so pleasant, and it looks like you cannot trade it for anything. I want you to know something. The nation of Israel, in Psalm 137, they were in Babylon in captivity because they took a costly diversion. And the costly diversion was the nation of Israel. We want you, or God wants you, to stay like this. But you see, when the prophet speaks, they could lift up their hands and say, What the Lord said, thus we will do. May his name be glorified. And the whole assembly could say amen. But once they go home, they still stay in their old system of doing things. And self-induced transitions, they come through what we call number A or number one, costly diversions. Let me tell you this morning, some deals look very sweet but they are a very costly diversion. Let me tell you something, that some journeys look very good, but they are a very costly diversion. You will arrive, and once you arrive, you will discover this was not my destination. And when you turn, you realize that the way is blocked. You cannot go through the same way that you came, you have got to take a detour like the children of Israel, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and yet the journey between Egypt and Canaan was very short if they never took a diversion. I pray this morning, and I pray that you hear it very well. May the Lord continue to minister to us, and should the Lord want us, let us not think that God is unfair. He is just protecting us from a costly diversion. Can, we, can somebody say amen? A costly diversion can cost you very much. 
I've seen families that enter into a costly diversion immediately. And people that were being celebrated and the youths were even praying, Lord, if it comes a time to give me a family, give me like the one of so and so. But because of some actions, then they enter into a costly diversion. Self-induced transitions, they also come through, number two, expensive assumptions. Where you assume something, and when you assume it, it costs you tomorrow. I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, that you will not assume, because some assumptions are very expensive. And let me tell you, all over, and I told us again, no matter how we prophesy, no matter how we preach, until sweat drops like blood, there is still a good number that will add up in the counseling queue because of their actions. And I pray this morning that God will help us to walk away from expensive assumptions. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, Oh, it's a prayer. Lift it up passionately. Say, Lord, help me today not to get into a costly diversion or an expensive assumption. Can somebody say amen? Because these are the things that delay and then deliverance ministries are there rebuking every witchcraft and sorcery and magic and rolling down. But when you wake up, it still remains Israel. You're in Babylon because of a costly diversion or an expensive assumption. Now, let's go further. Self-induced transitions can come from what we call derailing decisions. Derail. A train is supposed to stay on the rail. But when the train is out of the rail, then we say it has derailed. And let me tell you something this morning. There are some decisions that are derailing in nature. In other words, you are a train that is headed into the right direction. But because of some decisions, the cabins are out of the rail, and then the whole train topples over. Let me tell you something this morning. Our God is telling us today, we are supposed to stay in the rail, not out of the rail. May you receive that grace in Jesus' name. Oh, passionately can you say amen. May the Lord protect you because we don't have forever, brethren. We don't have 170 years to live on the face of the earth. If you derail for 40 years as a husband and you married when you are 25 and you have derailed out of the rail for 40 years, it means you will find the way when you are 65. You better ensure as the driver of that train that you will stay on the rail. You will make sure that the engine is running. You will make sure that the rims are positioned well on the rail. And let me tell you, because of derailing decisions, there are so many people that are saying, by the rivers of Babylon, here I am weeping and wailing when I, when I remember Zion. And what is the Zion? The Zion was the rail that they were supposed to follow. And they were told, this is a way. Walk in it. Don't diverge to the right or to the left. And because of that derailing nature of decisions, then you discover it doesn't work well. The Lord tells you, this man is not your husband. He will cause you pain. Or oh, this woman, it cannot match. You are calling cannot match with her. And therefore, leave it alone. I have somebody for you. But because you are looking at the clock, you are looking at your age, you are looking at your schoolmates, you are looking at your cousins, you say at the end of the day, I know God can help me, and I'm going to take these stones by the name of so and so, and one year later, I will turn them to be bread. Let me tell you, he will not turn to be bread. 
And because the Lord warned you, and you were there, and you forced it, let me tell you, sometimes clients read the room, and when they leave, you are there seated and wondering, until when shall we keep on making the wrong decisions? And this morning, the Lord is telling us that we need to watch over derailing decisions. I decree by the word of the Lord, the Lord will give you the strength to say no in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, I want to hear a glorious one. The Lord will give you the capacity to look at the devil and say, I will not bow, although you have promised me if I bow, all this kingdom will be mine. Derailing decisions. There are some people, when they shake their head like this and wake up to the reality, they are already 56. And the blunder started when they were 23. There are some people, when they shake their hands like this, like Samson, to get to know whether they have strength to lift up the gate or not, they are already 62, and they are already crying from the sofa. My knees, I cannot rise up quickly. And they began derailing when they were 30 years of age. That is what our fathers did, and we are paying for that. That is what our biological dads did. And instead of building our own houses, we have begun by building their house because they drank their house. Because they did everything they could do apart from even owning a home for the family. They are called derailing decisions. And this morning, I would want to minister to us, saints of God, that at the end of the day, when the Lord tells you it is not this. I was there some years ago. My wife would tell you this. I was there a few years ago before I met her. And I was saying she was the one. That one, eh? That one, whoever she was, eh? She is the one. She is the one. We are praying 14 days on the prayer mountain. Isn't that a great person who can pray with you for 14 days? And it was not like the fasting of today, the student fast of 6 to 6. No. Those days, if it is water, it is water for 14 days. If it is tea, it is tea for 14 days. But then even in the, in the course of the prayer, God is still at war with you. He is telling you this is a diversion. This is an assumption. This is a derailing decision. And at the end of the day, the drama happened. Let me tell you, you don't have to wait for everything to be messy. To begin asking, Pastor Susan, where are you today? Can I see you? Can I see you? Can I see you? Pastor Nicodemus, Pastor Dan, if I don't see you today, I will take rat rat poison. It is so bad, I'm in a mess. But when you weigh them, you discover the mess never happened last night. The mess ha has been building for 10 good years. But now it is urgent, and you must leave what you are doing and go and see them, only to sit and discover he has been in the game for 12 years. May the Lord protect us. I say this with a lot of passion, and I pray that you will receive it with a lot of passion. I declare you will not end by your rivers of Babylon. You shall not weep by Babylon in Jesus' name, because the Lord shall awaken your spirit to the reality of what you are in. One man of God prayed, and he was in a very stable relationship. Some of you may have heard about this testimony. And as he was planning for the wedding, he had this very elaborate dream, I don't know whether it's a dream or a vision, where the Lord showed him that he's actually dating a coffin. Yes, whatever he's dating, God is seeing he's dating a coffin. And he had to turn around regardless of the preparations. And let me tell you, saints of God, some of the things that we dance around, the devil is only giving us some time, and then later he is going to detonate and show everybody that you were in the wrong rail. I pray the Lord will help us. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, self-inducing transitions, number four, can result from what is called expensive impatience expensive impatience 
whereby you are Sarah. And Sarah, you are a witness that God said to Abraham that I'm going to give you a son. And, you, and, and, you, and, and the nations of the world will be blessed through you. But then, there is what is called expensive impatience. And Sarah goes further and tells Abraham, here is Hagar, and I wanted to spend the night with her because I think the word, yes, it was clear about a son, but the way my age is moving, I am past the age of childbearing. I don't think I'm going to be able to give you a son. So go into Hagar and get a son. And we see that is, has been an expensive impatience. We have security companies or security companies that are wired with very expensive items because a son of Ishmael can be ready to detonate a whole embassy. And where did he come from? From an expensive impatience. Everywhere you go now, you must be subjected. Dogs in their millions have been trained even to sniff human beings, to check on whether they are carrying any explosives. And where did it, was it born? It was born one day, a day like this. It was not a different day. It was a day like this when Sarah said, you know my husband. You see how I am. You see I am already bent over. You see I am past menopause twice. Now how can you tell me I'm going to give you a son? Just go into her. Let me be a foster mother and our daughter. And the baby was born. But the time came and God said, this was out of an expensive impatience. I will bless him, yes, because he carries the blood of Abraham, but my covenant I will make with Isaac. And let me tell you, saints of God, one of the things I, I find myself into, not that we would not want to do some things, but then you look at it at the picture of eternity. You look at it at the picture of what is going to happen. And then later, you realize that it will be an expensive impatience. I pray this morning as you lift up your hands that God will deliver us from the spirit of impatience in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, can I hear glorious amen? May the Lord cover each one of us and give us the spirit of patience. Somebody say amen. Somebody can be married at 25 and divorced at 40. Somebody can be married at 40 and stay in the right way and live to 120 in that marriage. So it is not about of whether it is happening or whether it is not happening. Let it happen the right way. Can I hear us say amen? Ah, what a message. My Sunday service begins on Friday. That is why when it doesn't flow well, I feel frustrated because it begins on Friday in my spirit. And on Friday, God dropped this message. I was to continue with Divine Transition Part 2. I had no, 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 no. And I told Simon and the team that were here, please, I want you to lock and go home. They said, we will wait for you until you finish prayer. I told them, suppose I pray up to midnight. I'm not a baby to be waited on here. Just go home. If I finish at midnight, I will lock and go home. And I was traveling here for hours and hours. And this message, I wrote it kneeling, facing that seat. And I pray this morning that God is going to deliver us from any expensive impatience in Jesus' name. That God will deliver us from derailing decisions, from expensive assumptions, and from costly diversions. Somebody say amen. They say if a ship leaves a port like the port of Mombasa, and then the pilot or the captain keys in the degrees that that ship is going to take, 
Because in the ocean, you cannot know where you are after you leave the buildings and you're in the middle of water. They say if he keys in the compass and misses by one degree, that is going to Italy or China and misses by one degree, they say as the angle continues to widen. Because in the beginning, the angle is too small. That's why you are not worried. That is why you are sleeping like a baby and you know things are not right. Because in the beginning, the angle of diversion is usually small. But as you continue to cover the distance, the angle widens. And they say that captain will arrive at a different continent. By the time he's receiving a signal that welcome, this is the port of this and this that you're going to be approaching in the next 1,000 miles or 500 miles, he will be in a different continent. And I want to ask, how many started here? But because of a costly angle of diversion, and you say, this brother, God is good. I'm an intercessor. I will turn these stones into bread. He will be the greatest man on earth. Then in three days, you don't have two teeth in the honeymoon. Then seven days, your face is in a bad shape. Then one year down the line, he is lifting the knife to you like this. And you had said, I'm an intercessor. I will turn the stones into bread. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, I am happy the way you are attentive. I declare you will not lose your inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not leave, you know, you will not, you will not miss out on your focus in Jesus' mighty name. Because God is going to speak to you in clear ways. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now, self-induced transitions, I'll have to leave the last part, I don't know for when, on what to do when you are in any of these seven things and what to do are other seven things. So let's just end it on uh, where they resort from. We could wind up on Sunday, but I don't promise because I know God moves in my heart in different ways. Number six, number five, Self-induced transitions can come from costly omissions. Costly omissions. You omit something, and as a result, you end up into pain and anxiety. I was reading a documentary, not reading, but watching rather, of a pilot who was so engaged with the other pilot the other captain, captain one and captain two, they are talking, and the plane is taking off. I love the Smithsonian Channel. It covers very clear uh, documentaries. And, and one of the things he was supposed to do was to press the button to open the flaps so that the plane can be able to take off well. So everything was checked and ticked, including that one, open flaps, it was ticked, but it was not open. And when they took off, they are almost at the end of the runway, and the plane is not lifting. And they cannot abort the landing, the, the takeoff. So because of the speed the plane is in, he tried to push it further. It is not going high. And this is because um, everything was correct. But when they were discussing with the other first officer on how they will land, in the next point, and they were discussing how they are going to each go and enjoy before the next flight, and they have been covered by the audio that was recovered in the black box. At the end of it all, they never, for, they never remembered to open up the flaps, and 160 lives perished that afternoon. And let me tell you something. When we are in the state of uh, costly omissions, Meaning, you know this is right. You know this is in the plan of God. You know this is required of me. It is required of me to pray. It is required of me to fast. It is required of me to pursue righteousness and purity. It is required of me to tithe and to offer unto God. If we end up 
not doing, we can enter into a costly omission. And let me tell you, world over, there are people who can look at you and tell you, I did everything right apart from one. And this morning, the Lord is telling us on life's transitions, if you are in it, may God, God himself, deliver you by the power of his Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? You are not doomed. You can still recover. You can still go back. The Bible says, go back to the crossroads where the roads meet. That place that had an intersection and you decided to turn this way, but the journey was that way. The Bible is saying, go back to the crossroads. Begin to ask him, did you say this? Did you mean this? Did you order this? Did you lead me into this? Is it my take? Is this my thoughts? Is it you, Lord? And he will be faithful to tell you it was not me. But because you have decided to turn and go back, I will restore to you what the locusts have eaten between here and there. May God restore what the locusts have eaten. Can somebody say amen? In that diversion, as you return, may the Lord restore what the locusts have eaten. That is the beauty with our God. He does not condemn you as long as you can lift up your hands and say, uh-uh, it is ten years, but naiba sasa narudi. That's my song. Sasa narudi. He will look at you and say, this is my son. And like the prodigal son, you'll find him with open lifted hands. And he will tell you, come back home. And because of the attitude of repentance, I will restore what the locusts ate in between. May that be you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, I wish there was a better prophetic amen. May that be you in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord himself, by his power, and let me tell you, he has forgiven crazy people. You think you are one? He has forgiven people in a greater mess. Samson prayed and said, Lord, this one more time, this one more. Would you imagine a blind guy, his eyes have been gouged out, and he's telling the young man, Help me to see the pillars, to feel the pillars, one and one. And the man is in such a total mess. But because he has realized, I have been in a costly diversion, an expensive assumption. I have had a derailing decision in my life. I have had expensive impatience and a costly omission. But I pray this one more time. And the Bible says the auditorium was packed to capacity. And they thought Samson is in one of those entertainments because after they removed his eyes, they left him to be an entertainer and to be grinding wheat for them. They thought he just wants to do a dance. And because we have a God who can hear one more time, remember me, Lord, the pillars collapsed under his pressure. And all the people that were in that that God knew they were supposed to die. The Bible says that there was great vengeance. He killed many under repentance than the ones that he was trying to kill in this condition I'm talking about. I can see the journey your spirit is in. You can always tell. I can see your spirit is in a journey. And you are analyzing A, B, C, D. Lord, I need to turn. I need to turn. The Bible says that stolen bread is sweet. And that bread eaten in the secret place is very pleasant. But at the end of it all, it leads into a place of destruction. Let me tell you something. God desires to bless you and he will bless you. Can somebody say amen? He will give you wealth that you can sleep. So many other the people you admire, they don't sleep. Without a pill and water, one pill and water, they cannot sleep. 
Because they are imagining what will nation newspapers say? What will standard say if there is another president who comes and orders this investigation? They cannot sleep, but God will bless you so that even in your billions, you can sleep like a baby. Can somebody say amen? Last two. Self-induced transitions are transitions come out of unvetted agreements. Unvetted. When you vet something. Unvetted agreements. You join up with somebody and say, we are business partners from today. And you say, cheers. Uh-huh. From today, we are associates. Cheers. From today, we are going to be trading together. But then because it is an unvetted agreement, you end up in a state that you're paying more. Let me tell you something. There are people when they're in your life, there may be a possibility you may not die at the age you are supposed to die. You may die at a younger age. Because when they came in, they brought a lot of tears. They brought a lot of pain and anxiety. And until you tell Lord as Abraham, now I can see I'm in danger. Look at the fields. If you go right, I will go left. If you go left, I will go right. And that day that Abraham decided to deal with this unverted agreement that was as a result of mercy, then the Bible says, and the Lord spoke to Abraham. Why was he? Why is it written? When they parted, when this agreement that was not vetted was done away with, and the Lord spoke to Abraham, could be you are not hearing God because of somebody in your life that you might sign out with a very great anointing of bye-bye. I know it's expensive to tell somebody that you have worked together for years. I realize it is not working any further. We will be friends in the Lord. But the deals, the transactions, the agreements cannot be there any longer. Let me tell you, unvetted agreements can lead you into a self-induced transition. May God give you the spirit of discernment. Come on, somebody, we are coming to a close. May the Lord give you the spirit of discernment. May you know the people around you, whether they should be there or not. And if they should be there, up to what percentage? Because you should not admit somebody at 80% acceptance, and God wants you to admit them 20% level. Because God knows when you go beyond 20, they will betray you. They will cause pain. They will cause injury to your soul. And let me tell you, this is a very, very important message. May the Lord help us not to walk with the wrong people in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, I want to hear glorious amen even from home over there. May the Lord give you grace in Jesus' mighty name. And I also want to close by saying, self-induced transition comes from a condition also called of a merciful heart. The people who have got a lot of mercy, they suffer a lot. Mercy is God's idea, but it has a limit. Can I hear somebody say amen? You cannot support your people back in the village with everything, and your wife and children are left to fast and pray, believing God for a meal because you sent everything home. That is called of a merciful heart. Teach them to operate with a certain amount of money because you also have a family to run. Can all the brothers seated here say glory to God? And can all the sisters that are here shout a glorious amen? amen. Because they are left, they left the, the, the guy had 20,000. And, and she's planning that this is going to happen. This is going to happen because I have an idea. This guy has 50,000. Only to discover, he's saying, 
dad said this, mom said this, my other brother said this, I said this, I said this, and all of a sudden I discovered that uh, the last message said, you don't have enough money to send uh, to do this transaction. And then the woman is left back to do a nest as fast. I tell you the things women go through at home. Because men, when they become over merciful, you find somebody has no rent. You find somebody has no this. There is a limit to mercy. Even in the days of Jesus, though he was the son of God and a great healer, he never healed everybody. And I have learned of a merciful people suffer. They suffer. They are used. They are misused. They are manipulated. They are tossed up and down. Because they know if I talk to him, he replies. I press a bit. He replies. I, I reply a bit. He's, he, it becomes a little bit tough. And then I reply. I know by the fifth message, he will say, wait, I'll do it tomorrow tomorrow of a merciful heart I pray today may God deliver us from this nature of transitions in Jesus name hallelujah I said four things one these are transition triggered by the things we do two these transitions impact personally and corporately Number three, that despite warnings, prophecies, and all that, people still end up in self-induced transitions. And finally, the loaded point number four is the seven things that cause self-induced transitions. And I will hold on there and say to us, I'm not sure whether the Lord will lead me this way on Sunday, on seven things you must do when you are in a self-induced transition. Make God empower us in Jesus name and may we lift up our hands and give the Lord a good hand of praise a good hand of praise come on he is a merciful God he is a merciful God in our error in our mistakes in our anxiety in our diversions he is still a merciful God his masses endure even to a thousand generations. Oh, Reba Babu Zande. Let's stand on our feet in conclusion of this message of today. And I want to give you a minute as soon as you stand. Don't wait at your neighbor. Don't even listen to your body. Don't even listen to your bills. Just lift up your hands and begin to pray. At the background here, they'll be singing Sasa Narudi. Just lift up your hands in the Lord and begin to say to the Lord, Lord, I return. Lord, I return from this costly diversion, from this expensive assumption, from this derailing decision, expensive impatience, from this costly omission, and from this unvetted agreement, and of a merciful heart. Lord, Lord, I pray that you minister to me by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the many who are lifting up their hands, even from their homes, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will empower each one of them by the power and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody again, lift up those hands and begin to surrender to him and tell him, Lord, take over. Lord, take over. Lord, take over. Lord, take over in the mighty name of Jesus and cause your grace. Oh, Repa Sanda Rabba Baba Sande. Oh, Rabba Baba Sande Riba Baba Sata. In the mighty name of Jesus, that your grace, Lord, that your power, God, is going to prevail by the reason of your spirit. Oh, Marato Kaba Baba Sande. Rindo robo zeta raba baba ba shande. Come on, somebody, lift up your hands and receive the grace. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, re pa shande riba baba ba shande. Oh, re pa sanda raba baba ba shande. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, re ba 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 shande. Lift up those hands and sing with them.
hands, lift up those hands, even from your home, lift up his hands, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I pray for every person that is uh, saying that, yes, Lord, I am coming back, that, yes, Lord, I am coming back from the costly diversions, I am coming back from the expensive assumptions, from the derailing decisions, from the expensive impatience, uh, from the costly omissions, uh, that, Lord, I am coming back uh, from the unvetted agreements uh, and from that of a massive heart, uh, that person that is saying, that, Lord, I come back, uh, that, Lord, I come back. Uh, I pray for them, O oh Lord, uh, that this afternoon your grace will prevail. Lift up those hands as I pray. The Lord, let your grace be upon your people. And as we all return, may there be these arms of the Father that are willing to welcome somebody. And I prophesy in your return, whatever the locusts ate, may the Lord repay you back. May the Lord repay you back. May the Lord compensate for you. May the Lord restore. May the Lord cover you again. And may the Lord give you a second chance because he's a faithful God. Thank you, our God. Lift up those hands, even from home, and repeat after me. Say, Lord, uh -huh. audibly, Lord, Lord. I, surrender I surrender all. Today, Today I, turn I turn from my diversions, from my, diversions my, assumptions, my assumptions, my wrong decisions, my, my impatience, my, my omissions, my agreements that are not right, my overmassive heart, and I thank you today for accepting me. Empower me and help me to achieve everything I lost. In Jesus' mighty name.
and all of us say amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand. Let's give the Lord a good hand. Um, you may first of all uh, take your position because of your giving. You'll come back, we'll sing later. You can take your seats. I want to pray for somebody as you prepare to give our, all your offerings. The till number, um, I mean the pay bill number will be on the screen and also will be on the uh, screen over there for those that are watching us live. But in case you are not born again and you're saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus, even here in the hall, you would want to dedicate your life to Jesus. I would want to give you a chance to stand. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. And if you're not born again and you want to receive Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, today I receive you into my heart. I will walk with you. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. And all of us say amen. It's very important that we honor God with our tithes, our offerings, our thanksgivings. Let's not be caught up in a costly omission of not giving. And uh, there is that pay bill number and the account number or direct Mpesa over there. And God is going to bless us mightily. So I don't see us holding our phones as much, meaning it's like we are done with the transactions for those who would want to give it live life on the altar um, it, you have that chance and uh, God will bless us mightily so let's pray because of our online viewers and also because of us father thank you for the giving of your children this morning I pray that you bless each one of us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and help us Lord not to be in a costly omission of not honoring you with our substances. And I pray this morning that you reward every giver in the name of Jesus Christ. And may your grace and your power prevail. Even those of us that are in the sanctuary, bless our giving and let it rise up to you as a sweet-smelling aroma in Jesus' mighty name. And all of us say amen. amen. So our online viewers... Thank you for joining us. The Lord bless you. Share this message with somebody. And the Lord do you good. Hope to see you on Wednesday for the next broadcast. And Sunday as we continue with life's transitions. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap as we wrap up the live coverage this morning. In Jesus' mighty name.